The right side breaks one tackle. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Great Sports Debates. I got my good friend Rich here from Las Vegas. We're going to hit some of the uh, playoff games from last week, and then we're going to follow that up with a couple of new things, as well as uh, new games this weekend. So Rich, I'm going to kick it to you, starting with uh, the Kansas City and Miami game. Miami pretty much got stumped and didn't do a whole lot. What were your thoughts on that game? Well, you know, going into the game, I thought minus seven. I don't know how Miami's going to do in that weather. And they did about exactly what I thought they would do in that weather. They just, it it just looked like they couldn't get it done. It just looked like the guys were just too cold. I don't know. They just looked like a mess to me. Kansas City, I think, is starting to pull it together. Um, They look pretty sketchy all year but they seem to maybe maybe be pulling it together at the right time of course they got one of the best coaches in the nfl so you'd kind of you'd expect them to do that i think yeah that was that was, that was and, yeah go ahead that was that was definitely some some good insight there i thought that you know i lost one bet on that i took miami in the points just thinking that cold weather bad weather that was a lot of points so I did lose on Miami with the points, but I made it up because I did some extra big bets. I took it the game under 44 and under 43 and a half. Kansas City was still having some issues with drops, uh, but it looks like that w- rookie wide receiver is finding his groove and he was open. And, you know, if Mahomes can have someone catch the ball, they could be a tough team to beat. How do you think they're going to do yeah. going forward? Yeah, I'm thinking back. Didn't Travis have a couple drops in that game? Yeah, Kelsey actually had three drops in that game. Yeah. Um, So it's mostly been some of the other wide receivers, but he's had some drops this year too. So if those guys can all get it together. You know, he did a lot of of damage to Miami too, but he had some big drops too. So I don't know. I, I feel pretty positive about Kansas City. I just don't know. It's going to be a tough road though. You know, I feel like. You know, Buffalo's peaking a little bit, and I think getting past the Ravens is going to be tough ultimately in the whole thing. Yeah, and yeah. we'll definitely get into those uh, matchups coming up. But first, I want to ask you what you thought about the Rams at Detroit. Detroit's oh. first home playoff game in like 30 years. It's funny, we're both in Vegas and love sports betting, but we're both Detroit Lions fans first. So I know I enjoyed the victory. It was a little close for my comfort. What were your thoughts and what were some of your takeaways from that game? Well, wow. It was a nail biter all the way. You know, going into the game, I felt like the Rams passing attack was really firing on all cylinders coming into the game. And I feel like their passing attack was underrated just because they had, you know, this guy's out that, you know, cups out Stafford's out, you know, Nakua's new. And so they didn't have a whole season of stats, you know, to, to pack up and pad up on. So I thought that people, you know, I know people knew they were good, but I don't think they got the recognition that maybe they should have. So I was very fearful going into the game against the lions because the lions second, I think, me personally, I think the worst part of the Lions team is probably the secondary. They've struggled there the most. And I'm thinking Nakua, Cup, Higby. Um, I mean, Skoranek is a good receiver. What's the other guy? Robinson. I mean, just, you know, murderers row out there kind of thing with Stafford. Um, so I thought, I don't know how the Lions are going to do it. They're going to have to get up in Stafford's face. And they did a pretty decent job um getting up in his face you know early in the game so i think that helped out i think the lions running attack continues to be what's really vaulting that offense forward and it might be understated sometimes because you got you know goff's playing really well um st brown's playing really well laporta you know, Reynolds, I mean, you got some guys that are are really showing up for games. Williams, I mean, everybody's showing up for games. So, but that running attack, I, I feel, feel like, like is what really, really springs it loose. 
Yeah, because. I totally agree with you. I think the Lions got to remember they have all these weapons that look really good, but it starts with the run game. And the yeah. run game allows the play action passing that creates all these big plays for them. And like you said, the Rams were a very underrated team. I did a lot of bets on the Rams, especially the second half of the season. People forget, like you said, all the injuries they had. Once Stafford started feeling better with that thumb, I mean, this team, not only did they win seven out of their last eight after the bye, but they were blowing a lot of teams out. And the one game they lost was to Baltimore in overtime. Yeah. They were putting up 30 almost every game or in that neighborhood. So I got the Rams on a lot of bets and a lot of overs. And I was definitely nervous that this was the worst possible first round matchup for the Lions. So much so that I did bet Lions, but I only did money line because, you know, I knew this was going to be the battle of two offenses scoring between all of the Rams firepower and the secondary issues you, you brought up in Detroit. And then, you know, Detroit, Detroit's just going to score. I mean, they got a good offensive line. You got good running backs pretty much as long as Jared Goff isn't under pressure. They're going to score more often than not. Yeah. You hit it right on the head. If Goff's got time, and I think that goes back, I mean, the line, they got a really good line, but it also goes back to the running game, you know, because if you don't have a running game, I, you know, these are professional, you know, defensive linemen. If they just pin their ears back and come at you, they're coming through, and they can't do that with that running attack. And if you give Goff time, if you let him set up in that pocket, that guy throws darts. He's throwing darts out there. I mean, he... He throws passes. Sometimes I'm like, I can't believe he just threw that pass. You know, they're just between two guys and it's just crazy, but he makes them, you know, but he doesn't do that well under pressure and he can't, you know, he's not a real mobile guy. No, not at all. And it's surprising. You think a younger guy and being able to move around a little more, but the fact is, you know, we saw even in that last playoff game, he tried to move up, in the pocket and he tripped over his own feet like <laughs> yeah, right. he doesn't he doesn't move well at all and i sometimes yeah. i see it and i'm like how did he not throw the ball away or see it coming it's like he sees someone coming he's like a deer in headlights so yeah they definitely have to keep him clean but you know if they do that like you said he, he just picks teams apart and that that was the other thing that that, that i was worried about is the way the rams play defense I was like, they're going to have to change some things or they're going to get shredded up. And, yeah. you know, it was a tough, tough road for them because at, at first they tried to adjust their defense to stop the pass. And you saw in the first half, the Lions were getting big chunk running plays. Then they had to start putting five people on the line pretty much the rest of the game, which yeah. again opened up the passing game. So it's a pick your poison. Let's move yeah, on to... Uh, the Philadelphia game at Tampa Bay. Uh, before this matchup came, you know, a couple weeks prior, I was thinking, hey, whoever the NFC East team is, whether it's Dallas or Philly, matching up against whoever wins the NFC South, that's going to be an easy win. But we saw how Philadelphia collapsed over the whole second half of the season. And I got some theories. I've been talking to some people about it. But – let me know what your thoughts are on that as well as the game with Tampa Bay and any insight that you want to mention from that game. Yeah, I I, I don't really know what to make of it, so I'm really interested to hear your theories on the whole Philadelphia collapse. I mean, it to me, watching that game, it may have been the most uninspired playoff play by a team ever. I mean, they – you know, you know, I know that, I know that it's not very technical, technical analysis, analysis, but they just looked like, like I, don't know, I don't know, like nobody, like nobody wanted, wanted to win, win or like, like people were playing not to lose or, or I don't even know what, know what but, but, you know, you know, I kept, I kept thinking that Philadelphia, that Philadelphia you, know, you know, I think every team in the league, league you, know, you know, really, when you think about it, all the team in the playoffs have gone through tough patches this year. You know, you know yeah. even San, San Francisco, Francisco, you know, yep. well, Philadelphia, Philadelphia at one time looked completely unbeatable. I mean, I, mean, I was watching those guys going, oh, man, I, I don't know how they don't, you know, just run the table here kind of thing. 
then San Francisco, I thought the same thing about them, and they went through a rough patch, and, and they kind of came out of it. You know, Green Bay started out so slow. Philadelphia, I, I don't know what. I don't, I don't know what's wrong, wrong with those guys, guys to be honest, honest with you. you. I mean, they, they just looked flat. flat. They looked uninspired against Tampa Bay, Bay versus a Tampa Bay, Bay team. You know, you know I, don't I don't know that Baker Mayfield, Mayfield is the most talented, talented guy in the league, but, but the guy, guy always plays with heart. heart. Yeah. No matter no what, you know, know that, that guy plays with heart. He's a team leader. You know, you know, it, it, it appears to me that he gets other guys on the team fired up, offense and defense. Sounds like the team loves him. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you, know, you know, I think he's he's, he's just a guy that has a lot of heart and, and, and plays that well. But, you know, you know he's, he's limited, limited, you know, in terms, in terms of his skill level. level. Yeah. And I hate to say that because he's, he's a great player. He's a pro quarterback. But I think it's his heart that's exceptional. And, um, it, it's almost, almost the Baker, Baker Bay, Mayfield, Mayfield heart and the heart of the Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers just overwhelmed. That's what it looked like. They just overwhelmed Philadelphia. You know, and that Tampa Bay defense, I got to tell you, those guys look tough out there. And they've had, you know, they've had kind of a legacy of being tough, you know, on defense. Absolutely. They, they scare me. They scare me. You know, being a Lions fan, I'm scared of that Tampa Bay defense after seeing that. From the thing we just talked about with golf, yeah, right? and we'll we'll They're definitely gonna... get we'll definitely get into some Lions Tampa Bay, but you know first I just have a couple of theories. Like nobody really knows what happened to Philly. It doesn't make a lot of sense. They're ten and one. They fall off a cliff, and I gave them the benefit of the doubt for a while, just saying, hey, this is a team with a strong offensive line and a strong defensive line that's going to win you some games. So. The only things I can piece together just from my thoughts and from what I've seen in the games is one, some of that defensive line is aging. You look at guys like Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, they're up in age. You look at their sack numbers, like as a team, it's literally cut in half. I mean, they were like record level territory the year before, like 72 or something crazy. And they're nowhere near that number this year. And then the second thing, I think the Eagles forgot a little bit of their identity. So I think where they had success going back to last year is they came into the season knowing, hey, we're going to be a physical, run-the-ball team, and Jalen Hurts is like the trick play, and now he's got another good receiver in A.J. Brown, and he's got his legs to pick up first downs. And if you look over the season – they definitely passed the ball more. Now you could say that's because they got down early in games, but I honestly think that they gave up running the ball too soon in too many games and didn't run enough. If you look at even when they played Tampa Bay the first time, they ran the ball and Swift had a big day against them last time. So I think Brown being hurt, obviously, you know, hurts. You know, Jalen Hurts was clearly not 100%. You know, he had the finger thing, plus he had the the knee issues. So he wasn't 100%. And I think you have to kind of lean into the strength of your team. You have a a strong offensive line. You got to run the ball. And then the last part to that, nobody really made note because they were winning, but they lost a lot of guys from their back seven and the linebackers and the secondary core on defense. And some of these guys like Bradbury are exposed now when you're having to cover guys a lot longer than when you had that ferocious defense that was in the backfield all the time with guys like Reddick and everyone yeah. just getting in there, getting pressure. Yeah. That defense yeah. is not the same. So I think yeah. that was a big factor in that. And, you know, on the Tampa Bay side, they got a lot of weapons, you know, with uh, Evans and, you know, really good win and on and you know all these guys i don't know that they're going to run the ball very well but they can pass the ball and like you mentioned they have a pretty strong defense especially against the run so that would be an interesting matchup when we talk about that game later as well but yeah. let, let me move on and let's talk a little bit about green bay and dallas this is kind of the one game that surprised me a bit where i did wind up losing a little bit of money Thankfully, I didn't bet a lot or have a lot of bets on this game, but I did uh, have a bet on Dallas uh, money line that messed up a parlay I I had. I hit every other leg, 
And I thought Dallas was pretty safe here, uh, despite the fact that, you know, Jordan Love has been playing on a different level the second half of the season. Wow. It's making yeah. all the difference in the world. Uh, let me know what you think about this game, because I definitely did not see it going this way. Yeah, I, I was in shock. I think I was just in shock. And let me just say, I'm not a Dallas fan, so I wasn't in shock in that way. But I bet on Dallas, too. And I lost yeah. a bunch of money on, on Dallas because I just thought, hey, Dallas is at home. You know, yeah, they've been know. monsters at home, like record breaking. Like I had some friends in there. Well, look who they played, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it doesn't matter who they played. They had an average margin of victory at home of like 21 points a game. That's average margin of victory. Yeah. We're talking record status and not just at home. If you look at the whole year, they had nine wins by 20 points or more during the season. Yeah. That's one less. Now, I'm not saying they're on the level of these teams, but just showing how dominant that is. There's two teams that have done more wins by 20 or more. The 2007 Patriots. I went 60 and 0. There's got to be a Patriots team in there. Yeah. Super great. And the 99 Rams, if you remember, great oh. Joe on turf. So yeah. they're not in Was that, that Kurt category, Warner days? But I'm saying that that's Kurt? what kind of dominance yeah. they had yeah. during the season. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy what they were doing at home, and it just felt indestructible, undestructible. And, um, you know, the Packers have definitely be play been playing well. They came and really handed it to the Lions on Thanksgiving Day, and I feel like that was the turning point for the Packers. Absolutely. You know, coming in, it, it, it was all, uh, the Packers are so, so, whatever. You know, love is okay. He's kind of stepping in. But I think that was the turning point for the Packers was that game against the Lions in Detroit on Thanksgiving. And since then, you know, they have been wow, you know, and they really put the wow, the W in wow against Dallas. I, I don't even know what happened to Dallas. I, I literally was sitting there watching the game going, okay, the Cowboys, they're going to pull it together on this drive, you know. I got down like 21 nothing so fast. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm like – Okay, that's it. That you know, they jumped up on them. Dallas is going to start, and it just didn't happen. And I, I don't even think the final score of that game reflects the dominance. No, it that was the a beatdown. You're on. right. It, you know, they give up a couple soft. You know, you're up that far at the end of the game. Teams always give up a couple soft touchdowns, right? They're just trying to run the clock out. You know, take ten yards, take whatever. You know, run the ball seven yards, whatever. We'll go. You know, so Packers are, man, they're, they're really a hot team right now. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's another team that's been really strong in the second half of the season, getting hot at the right time. A lot of young guys on that team and, guys, you know, yeah. they're, they're figuring out that's the part that scares me. You know, you don't like it when you have a team that young because that can be building towards something. I did think that the Packers were going to put up some points. Um, I was just kind of surprised that the Dallas wasn't able to move the ball as well. And obviously as well as green Bay's offense did, which was just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, what happened to the Dallas defense? I mean, right. Uh, right. right. And, and, and even in the games that they were getting beat up before is more teams slashing them, running the ball when they got upset by yes. Arizona, uh, yeah. they ran for a ton of yards against them. Obviously San Francisco ran the ball all over them. Yeah. So yeah. that, you know, that was, that was definitely surprising to me. I mean, Green Bay yeah. pretty much did whatever they wanted to that whole game on offense. Shocking. That yeah. was, that, that was, I think that, that was the was real shocking, really shocking part was just yeah. this great, supposedly great Dallas defense. It was like, they just didn't even show up for the game. I, I don't even know. Yeah. Third, <laughs> third year in a row with 12 wins and not a whole lot to show for it. Let's move on to one I think is going to be pretty quick. We had the game uh, Pittsburgh at Buffalo. Uh, I think this one was one that everyone kind of knew. Pittsburgh was clearly the weakest team in the playoffs. Buffalo's been hot, but they are known to be inconsistent. I got jammed on this a little bit because they did move the game date, and I had some unders there. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you think about that game, knowing that you know the Steelers didn't really have a good offense to begin with? And then they got TJ Watt out on the defense. What were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah I, you know, in this one, I kind of watched a little bit. I was kind of distracted. I had the game on kind of thing. 
and it was you know it was the josh allen show when he comes to play you know what i mean uh, yeah. and I, I think he's got this evil twin brother or this I, I don't know friend that looks like him that sometimes suits up for josh allen and what happens but that was the real josh allen against pittsburgh and it's and crazy because like you say you watch josh allen he probably has the best physical tools in the league oh. and you see him sometimes and you're like this team could beat anybody and they definitely anybody. can yeah. but then he just he has some like just really bad turnovers at the wrong time and you know sometimes what they're doing just isn't clicking or makes sense they've been pretty hot as of late they kind of had to go on it they basically been in the playoffs for a while happened to go on a run just to get into the playoffs and you know now at the two seed what do you think about them going forward well i mean you know they looked really tough if they if they can play if josh allen can play like that and that whole team can stand up like they did against pittsburgh but i agree with you you know i think they were outgunned by pittsburgh before the game started i didn't i didn't really see i didn't really think pittsburgh had a chance honestly yeah but but Buffalo just looked so solid. It was like, boy, they could beat anybody if they show up to play like that. And, uh, you know. Totally, yeah. totally agree. Uh, next game we'll hit up is uh, Cleveland at Houston. This is the one I, I probably profited the most on. I had uh, Houston in several parlays as well as uh, money line bet. I had them with C.J. Stroud and over the – 249 and i had them mixed into several other things houston won the game cj stroud has kind of shown what i feel like i've seen every time he's been playing people are acting like this is a big breakthrough but if you've been watching them this guy has been having games like that most of the year uh i know cleveland's defense was tough i want to say in my opinion the thing that really made houston win the game is tunsil and I don't think a lot of people talk about Laramie Tunsil enough as one of those top-level left tackles. I mean, you hear Trent Williams and Panay Sewell, rightfully so, and you know Lane Johnson. But this guy is on that level. He's been an all-pro. He's been traded for multiple first-round picks. He pretty much eliminated Miles Garrett. And yeah. Miles oh. Garrett's eliminated – that defense looks a lot different. And Joe Flacco, you know, granted, he's played better than the other quarterbacks they've had, Deshaun Watson included so far. But people were overlooking all the interceptions he's had because they were winning games. What do you think about that game? Well, I mean, Houston, coming into the season, I thought Houston was going to be complete trash. I yeah, really, I agree. You know, if you said at game zero, what did I think of Houston? They're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. And wow, I don't think anybody thought CJ Stroud, maybe, you know, that whole thing was going to happen. And yeah, you know, bro, that's a, that's unbelievable to expect from a rookie quarterback. Yeah. And he's just, he just looks like he's improving week. You know, he's been playing well, but he's improving week after week after week. And he doesn't look like a rookie, you know? So my takeaway from that game was just, you know, CJ Stroud just wow. I mean, wow. And you know, like you said, the Cleveland defense just looked like it folded. And I I like your analysis. I wasn't really thinking about yeah, you know, Miles Garrett. Yeah, Miles Garrett just not just wasn't a factor, you know, big Yeah, factor. and it's crazy because he's been one of the most dominant players all year long. Yeah. And I, you know, honestly, I bet on Cleveland on that game. And yeah. I wouldn't blame anybody for that. They won a lot of games. They had the top defense in the league, and yeah, yeah. I think it was just a matchup issue. Um, you know, I didn't expect them to, to to be able to have that kind of impact on Garrett, but I just figured, hey, if CJ has enough time where he can stand enough plays, he's going to make plays happen. He's done it all year, and the yards and the completion percentage, what surprises me is, you know, there's a couple things. So first, I'll give you a stat that I saw. I saw. Uh, the only guy to lead the league in yards per game passing and touchdown to interception ratio. It's him. And I want to say the other two guys that I did before were like Joe Montana and oh. like Brady. So 
That's pretty good company, right? Uh, yeah, big the time. Guy, the guy's throwing the ball downfield. You know, a lot of times these guys have the, a lot of touchdowns, a little interceptions. They got the West Coast type offense, a little dinks and dunks. Like yeah. this guy's throwing bombs down the field. So yeah, it's really impressive to me. Yeah, so yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. These matchups are really looking good. Yeah, and before we get into the matchups coming this week, I just want uh, a couple things that just hit of current news and things going on. You know, not necessarily so current now, but recently, and because it's a major thing, lots of coaches have moved on. But two in particular, I want to mention. You got Nick Saban uh, retiring at Alabama. You got the hoodie out. They're calling it, you know, mutual. (laughs) It's crazy to me because these guys have both been around for so long. And you could probably make an argument for either one of them as the best of all time in what they do. Give me your thoughts on Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. Yeah, I mean – you know, Nick Saban, interesting. You know, I was first introduced to Nick Saban because I went to Michigan State. He became the oh, Michigan there you State. go. He became the head coach at Michigan State after I think he was the defensive coordinator at Cleveland, actually, and then got that job and really turned the Spartan team around. You know, then he goes south um, and, you know, just tears it up. Didn't do well at Miami, obviously didn't do well in the the pro format kind of thing. But, I mean, you can't argue with his record in, in college football and his performance is just – you're right. You definitely can make an argument for him being greatest of all time kind of coach. I mean, it's just – I mean, it's insane if you look at it. He won six national titles, I believe. And I had to double-check this because I heard the stat. And I was like, wow, that is right. Every single Alabama player that across his tenure – that played at Alabama four years, won a national championship. Whoa. They were that, so that good shocking. so often. Just, I mean, for, for people that have things to say against Saban, you know, I heard all this stuff talking to some people about this recently. Well, he's got all the five-star guys. You know, he had to build that. And he's done it at multiple places. He won at uh, Toledo. He went to he went Michigan State, to Michigan as, you said. State as you said. You know, he didn't get to the highest level there, but you know, you are behind some teams in that conference. He rose them to a new level, and they won every. They year. won over ten games, right? You know, with him, and yeah. and he was only there for a short time. Yeah, I mean, he goes to it, LSU, it was, he wins the yeah. national championship. He goes to exactly. Alabama where they had been replacing coach after coach that can't meet the impossible Alabama standard. And honestly, I thought Saban was a great coach then already, but I was like, this is going to be tough. The expectation is unrealistic. And he exceeded what anybody thought was possible. And I tried to think, maybe you can think of someone I forgot. I was going through my mind, you know, most dominant runs, Like, his run is so much longer than any of these other dominant runs I can think of. I thought about the USC years when they had, you know, Reggie Bush and Lineart. I thought about Miami in the early 2000s as well as in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s. The Florida State teams in the late 90s. You know, there were some good dynasties of Clemson, but none of them were that good that long that I can think of. You know, Yeah, I mean – Closest I could think of would be Bobby Bob at Florida State. It yeah. just feeling that it, that one just felt like nothing like Saban. I agree with you that long, but it felt like Florida Florida State with him. They were top know. five a lot of years. Yeah, that was kind of a boy. They were always in it to win it kind of thing. Um, Absolutely, but not to the level of success as Saban for sure. So crazy. I was shocked that he, you know, that was a shocker. But All Belichick's right. a shocker, too. Well, let's move on and do some uh, quick fire rapid, any kind of bets, props, or things you like on these upcoming matchups. You we know, got- I haven't uh, – I'll tell you my just picks bets. I haven't looked at a lot of the props yet. Okay. Um, so it's going to be hard for me to do some quick fire on that. No worries. You know, just tell me, tell me what you're thinking on some of these upcoming games and what you like. I – 
you know, Green Bay and San Francisco, boy, oh boy, I, <laughs> San Francisco's been such a monster. I'm going to bet on San Francisco. Um, I, I feel money line is probably safe. I don't know if the points will be safe, but um, I feel like San Francisco's going to do it. I don't think it's going to be an easy game for San Francisco. Um, yeah, I agree. I like San Francisco as well. I got um, this big group uh, betting pool that I do where you have to pick every single game against the spread from the regular season to the playoffs. So in that format, I took San Francisco minus nine and a half. I haven't made an actual bet. I definitely like San Francisco. I just don't like giving up nine and a half. That's just so much. Where I want to go with that. I said, I feel like the money line safe is a bad word to use, but you know, it's a bet. That I think we're, points, I think we're both, we're both rooting for green Bay in this game. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see that, but I, boy, I think San Francisco is going to do it. I don't Nine, nine points, points for nine and a half. That's a ton, man. I, I don't, I just don't, don't see the game being that far apart at the end. I really don't. So, so next one we got up is uh Houston at Baltimore, same spread, but I don't know if there's, there's the same separation. I know Baltimore had the best season this year, but nine and a half points is kind of tricky with me in this matchup. What do you think? Uh, again, I, I mean, I almost feel like nine and a half points in the playoffs is an insane number going in. Especially into a, in the divisional, divisional round. round. Yeah, especially when you get to this point. I mean, you know, do I think Houston and the Ravens? I don't see that being a nine-point game either. I just don't think there's any way that it, it's going to go like that. And I feel I, – I guess if I'm betting money line, I'd pick the Ravens. I don't love it because I feel like Houston's hot. And I don't know if the Ravens are, you know, I don't, I don't feel like they're coming on strong, like, you know, a green Bay kind of team or even the Houston kind of team coming on strong and Kansas city and Buffalo, they're both kind of pulling it together, but the Ravens feel a little bit like, I don't know, man, they look yeah. tough, but you know, you know, the Rams should have beat them, you know, a couple of yeah. weeks ago. The Rams should have won that game. I know it went to overtime, but the Rams should have beat them. It should have never even gone to overtime. And that's not to say the Rams aren't good, but, you know, the Ravens are not some unbeatable team. So I don't like a nine-point spread. And I'm definitely going to keep my eye on the injury report in this one. Uh, Baltimore might wind up missing a couple of key guys on defense. So that could wind up making a difference. Um you know, it's tough to say which way to go here. Nine and a half is a scary number. I thought about two, uh, like you're saying, teasing. You know, maybe you tease Houston up to a ton of points. Or, you know, if the line drops to nine or eight and a half, maybe if you think the Ravens are going to win, you could tease them down to two and a half. Tough yeah. spot. The game I think we're both going to be most interested in, Tampa Bay at Detroit. Uh, I heard on Bet MGM. They were saying that they thought that this was um, the easiest line, but they liked Tampa Bay, so I was kind of surprised, kind of shocked. I actually like Detroit here. Uh, I took them, and I teased that that number down from uh, six and a half to half a point. It opened at six points. It almost immediately shot up at the six and a half. I feel like Detroit's going to win for sure, and my only question is, are they going to win by six and a half or not? Yeah, six and a half points is a lot. That's a lot. Like, it, again, I'm just going to say playoffs in general. That's a lot of points. Um, I think yeah, if the, it was four, if it was four, I would have been all over it. Yeah. And I might, I might even bet it at six and a half. I already got a couple bets here. I definitely think Detroit's going to win. You know, like I said, I just don't know if they're going to escape win or if it's going to be a blowout. Now, I know they won earlier in the year 20 to six. I think both these teams are a little bit different now. Uh, Detroit was able to run decently against their top, you know, rated run defense. Of course, I think Detroit's going to be able to pass on them pretty well, um, even though they do have a strong defense. I don't think the Bucks are going to be able to run on Detroit at all. The running game's not that great, and that's kind of where Detroit shines. The question is going to be, can Baker step up again and have another good game against another bad secondary? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm, my biggest concern is giving Goff time to pass. 
I'm worried a little bit about this Tampa Bay, um, you know, defensive rush. That's that's really my biggest concern. If, if he gets enough time, you know, they can cover the point spread. If he doesn't, it's going to be tighter. I don't know that Baker is going to tee off on Detroit passing. I mean, you got Evans, great receiver. Um, we'll see. But I, you know, Baker's a little mobile, but I think that Detroit. I don't know. I feel like that Detroit defensive line is going to get through. I think they're going to put some pressure on him. I really do. I seriously uh, hope so. And I feel like Aiden Hutchinson, maybe I'm biased because I am a Lions fan. But I swear I feel he gets held more without a call oh, than any player in the league. Oh, my God. It seems like every play, you know, he's bent over backwards because somebody's pulling him around the neck or something. It's like, what? What? And and he's so fast, they're impactful holds, you know, that they're really having an effect. So, so I, agree. I agree. I think Detroit's going to do it. Again, I don't like these big point spreads in these, um, the, you know, this level of the playoffs is, is really, really tough. tough but but um, I, I think it could be – I think it could be a three-point game, you know. Detroit's been a little soft at the end of games too if they have a lead. Yeah, Absolutely. They've yeah, had a few man. times where they come out firing, like last week, or in the Saints game that they almost choked away. Oh, like, bam! Twenty-one points out of the gate. I was feeling then, sorry for the Saints. Happens? You know, I was like, "Whoa, these guys are getting crushed!" And then all of a sudden, you know, it's a nail bite. Right. So, um, I think Detroit's going to do it. I think it's going to be a good game, and hopefully, Goff has the time that he needs. If Goff has the time, they're going to shred Tampa Bay, though. I think. Yeah, I definitely like I definitely like Detroit in this game. And I think I'll be looking in some of the props here. I haven't looked at all those numbers yet, but you know, St. Brown over his receiving numbers has been very kind. Um yeah, I, right. <laughs> I feel like uh Evans on the Tampa Bay side could could be a good number there, and I'll probably be looking at uh whatever Jared Goff's passing number is, as well as, yeah. you know, always just checking out everyone kind of see if there's a discount whether it's montgomery or or whoever yeah i feel like montgomery's been you know pretty discounted on the rushing yards always know? well i'm like wow these are wow okay 50 i, I feel like there's 55 50 yards, yards. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah i'm like come on really well you know let's jump into this last game you might like this one this is the one where you have a small point spread you got Kansas City at Buffalo, Buffalo minus two and a half. What are your initial thoughts? I I I, I like Buffalo at minus two and a half. I, Kansas City, they definitely have pulled it together, but I think that Buffalo team at home, I think the same. Um uh I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a repeat of last week in terms of the level of play. I don't think they're gonna dominate Kansas City like they did the Steelers. But I think Josh Allen, I think the real Josh Allen's going to show up again. I think being at home for them is huge. And I I feel pretty confident about Buffalo in that game. I really do. Yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling the same way. I like Buffalo here. Uh, I think I'm a little hesitant or I haven't made a bet because no team has burned me as much this year as Buffalo. <laughs> had so many bad, bad, bad spots from – Oh yeah, Buffalo against the Jets. Jets can't score, but and then they lose to the Jets or don't cover or so they've yeah. had a lot of disappointing games this year. But you know, when they beat teams, they really beat them. And when it comes down to two and a half points, you're really just picking which team you think's going to win. And Buffalo yeah. at home is hard to go against. Uh, they should have a lot of edges in the in this matchup. At the end of the day, we both like Buffalo minus two and a half. Lots of good bets out there. If there's anything we missed or you have questions on, let us know in the comments section. I want to apologize for the echo. We had some issues with uh, audio on the Zoom. But at the end of the day, our most important thing is to give you guys the content and the answers you want for the week's betting. Let me know what you think of this new podcast format. As always, like, share, subscribe, and thanks a lot.